What's up, YouTube? Uh, Staff Sergeant Calhoun here. Coach Calhoun. So what I want to do is just briefly talk about one of my favorite guns uh, as far as a sidearm. This is literally my go-to uh, my go-to-war gun, my go-to gun for home defense. It's my duty carry. If I'm going to do uh, some VIP protection, bodyguarding, or uh, outside the waistband and duty carry, professional security, or something related to where I have to carry a firearm on my hip or outside my waistband, the Glock 21 SF is the one that I bring. It is my number one duty carry. And again, it's also my part of my home defense system. It's also just a lot of fun to shoot. It's accurate, it's reliable, all these things. So we're going to talk about that. I got some talking points. Um, I wanna, I've been wanting to do a video for this on this for a while. So basically, let me start. Number one, any one of you guys who is familiar with the block platform should know just by looking at it that it is in a safe condition. That triggers to the rear. The, the ones that you don't know that, you just don't know. Uh, that means that this weapon is not charged. So it's in a safe condition. Another way to prove that is my projector magazine. You can see that there's no rounds in this one. This one does have rounds in the form of power points. I have a variety of power points in here. This is a 10 round magazine, 45 ACP. Also a 10 round magazine. You see it's empty once again. Uh, it, the gun is, just trust me when I tell you the gun is empty. I've already inspected it. So let's get into the review. So what I got here is a gun that I purchased back in 2010. And now here we are in 2019. So this, this gun, I've owned it for nine years, going on 10 years. So we're in July. So going on 10 years, I own this gun. As you can see, the finish is held up. It's a typical Tenifer finish, which uh, Glock uh, puts on most of the sidearms. This is a Gen 3 gun. I like the Gen 3s. You know, we're up to what Gen 5 now, but I prefer the Gen 3 still. When it's uh, when it works, why fix it? Uh, here's your external safe or your external extractor that Glocks are known to have. It's a very short one. Um, this one was made in Austria. Some of them are made in um, I think in Georgia, I believe. What does it say right there? Smyrna, Georgia. But this one is made in Austria. Uh, we have a factory that it was sent out of by Georgia, but this gun was made, manufactured in Austria, Germany. So, well, Austria is a country, so I can't say Germany, but it's right next door to Germany. The only thing I've really done to it, really, is just put on some night sights, which these are uh, Trigicons. Uh, so these are guaranteed to glow for 12 years, I believe. And, and they're very bright. They're very bright at night. They work. I put them on myself and I tested it out. Uh, very accurate. I was getting headshots at 30 meters without any trouble. And I've gotten some some uh, general target hits out to 50 meters with this with these sights. So it's very accurate on a uh, man size silhouette out to 50 meters. No problem at all. I could shoot this probably out to 100 meters without any problem. Um, some of the things I like about the gun, I'm an advocate for the 45 ACP. If you're not, if you like 9 millimeter, more power to you. I shot 9 millimeter and 45 in the in the military. I was in the Marines for 21 years. Uh, I became a rifle and pistol coach. Otherwise, people know know us as PMIs, which is Primary Marksmanship Instructor. That's a MOS 8531, which leads you into being a professional marksmanship instructor. Snipers are 8541s. Uh, rifle and pistol coaches are 8531s. So you see we're in the same ballpark when it deals with uh, 
excellent, excellent marksmanship with pistol and rifle. Snipers generally get trained to use their sidearm from an 8531 because a rifle and pistol coach has been trained to teach all those basic fundamentals that every Marine needs way before you become a sniper. So before you become an 8541, you got to get past an 8531 because that's, that's the uh, found, foundation of marksmanship. Uh, as you see here where the uh, slide stop is, it's been worn down a little bit. Kind of got a, like a polished look about it. That's just from me actuating it with my thumb. The uh, polymer frame, I have no problem with it. It's comfortable to me. I do want to put some grip tape on it though because it could get a little slick, but otherwise I don't have a problem with the finger grooves. Um, and then you have this little ridge here. I like it. Very comfortable gun to shoot and to hold. Um, like I said, I'm going to put some grip tape and then all I have is uh, these. You know, some people put this, you know, they put like the Punisher thing back there. I might do something like that. Who knows? Um, other than that, like banging around, taking it out to the desert, shooting it in uh, gun competitions, pistol competitions. You see it's held up. Not a lot of wear and tear. It's a tough, durable gun. So that's that's what it looks like. Here's the magazine. 45 ACP. It's got the light uh, rail, accessory rail. And then it compares to, I have two other 45s, but this is one of them. Another one of my go-to sidearms. This is the 6-hour P220, also in 45 ACP. Double action. Stainless steel eight round mag, polymer 10 round mag with, with molded ingest, injected plastic. So you got 10 plus one, eight plus one. So that's nine rounds, 11 rounds. Or you can get 13 round mags for this, or even get the extended mags. So in a comparison here, they both shoot 45 ACP, but they have different grip angles and different bore access. This one is height above bore a little bit higher also comes with proprietary night sights from SIG. These are the SIG light night sights. SIG light night sights. They come with the gun. So it's an instant upgrade. They're also very bright. This bore access, as you can see, is higher to my uh, the web of my hand as you hold it up here. Whereas this one, the gun is higher than, you know, than the... Than, the way this profile is. There's a height above bore, which the bore is right about in there. That does not bother me. It just gives you probably, this will probably give, the SIG will probably give you a little bit more muzzle rise when you're shooting it than this one. But they're both extremely accurate. No problem hitting targets at 50 meters with this or this. The main differences are double action, striker fired, all metal construction, polymer frame, metal slide, eight round stainless steel mag, 10 round uh, polymer coated mag, a lighter magazine. This one is thinner. As you can see how thick that is in comparison to this. So look at the profile there of the, of the grip. It's a little bit more easy to to grip, so there's a there's a comfort there. It's a little bit easier than this comfort grip, but I like this grip. It's a fat grip, yes. It's thick. It's double stacked. I have no problem with. Some people will, but I have meaty hands. Like these are large hands, not not extra large. But when when I wear a glove, I wear a large size glove. So there's the gun, the Sig. And the Glock. We're mostly talking about the Glock today. This is just kind of showing you a comparison between the two 45 ACPs. Both very prominent in law enforcement and in the military. Here's a quick talking point breakdown. You can see it's a Glock 21 SF Gen 3, 45 ACP, semi-automatic pistol, polymer frame. Uh, the asterisk is for injected mold, injection molded plastic which means there's metal parts injected 
molded around that the plastic is molded around uh, those metal parts. It's a striker fired pistol, so that's one of the characteristics as opposed to being a hammer fired pistol like that SIG. The striker is inside the frame. You can't see the, the striker or the firing pin. It's internal. Um, this one is also internal, but you see the hammer. This one, you don't see that action. Striker fired is a, is a unique thing that the Glock exploited. They weren't the first, but they exploited it to its success. No external or thumb safety. All of Glock safety features are pretty much internal, the drop safety and so forth. The only safety feature that you can actually see on the outside is that little trigger bar that needs to be actuated before the trigger can actually be pulled. The rest of it is keep your finger straight and off the trigger and if you drop it, it won't, it won't discharge because there's a disconnect in there. So that it won't, uh, you know, you have a drop safety basically. If you drop it, it won't fire. So there's the three proprietary safety features, one of which you just saw the other two are internal, which um, I could go into detail on it, but I don't want to. So look on the website. There's three proprietary safety features. They all are excellent. It's a safe gun. It's a lightweight gun. It's a lot lighter than that. This is a heavier gun than this one. This is about 30 ounces, maybe 31. This is about 37 ounces. Um, manageable recoil. It's more manageable, I think, than the SIG for recoil because of the low bore axis more than likely. Even though that's a lighter weight pistol, that one is good because of the, the, the solidness of the metal, you have no problems because it absorbs it. But because of the low bore axis, that gives you more of a push. That has a little bit more of a flip at the muzzle. Uh, so there's your low bore axis. Uh, some, some characteristics, it's durable and reliable and accurate. Those are the three characteristics that mean the most to me. Uh, it had it came with night sights, so that's an accessory. Uh, actually, I put those on. The uh, the SIG came with night sights, but the Glocks I put I put those on. Some other characteristics: it's easy to field strip. It's easy to perform routine maintenance on. It's easy to find holsters and lights, lasers, etc. Uh, interchangeable barrels for change of caliber. That's a big one for me. I like that. Meaning, I could put a ten millimeter barrel in there just by dropping it in. And now I have, a, in essence, a Glock 20. And then you get a different magazine and I'm hunting wild boar, so, or whatever. So that's a big plus, as you see there, for SWAT, military, law enforcement, private citizens. If ammo is on short supply, say you can't get 45 ACP, but they have some 10 millimeter, you could buy 10 millimeter, swap out that barrel and you're, you're still in business. Or if you're hunting specific game, i.e. wild boar or grizzly, because the... 10 millimeter compares to a 41 Magnum as far as the energy. And 41 Magnum is definitely good enough to hunt brown bear or wild boar. Um, so those are the things I wrote down on the talking points. Any questions, comment below. As you see there, I was in field artillery. 0811 was my MOS designation. I will do a more in-depth review on this one. I think I actually have one from years previous, but I want to go over this one again as well. I just kind of showed you a comparison of two of the most prominent 45s on the market that are very good guns, reliable. They're both excellent. $1,000, $600. There's your price points uh, on the average. You might find a better deal if you get them used or whatever, pre-owned. But basically, $1,000 for the SIG, $600 for the Glock. Here's your difference in the magazine widths and, and you know, et cetera. These magazines are expensive, by the way. They're 40 bucks a pop. These, on the other hand, are only about 27 to $28 uh, a pop. So it's up to you how you want to do it, but I like them both. I can carry them both. I train with them both. There's just differences in characteristics in the weight, in the way they feel, uh, the trigger pulls. This is in double action mode. That's a 10-pound trigger. This one is always going to be consistently a 5.5 or 5.4 pound pull. This one is a 10 pound pull in double action mode like it is now. And then when you pull the, pull the, uh, um, if this was in single action mode, then it's like a 4.4. So there's two different weights there. You have to be understanding of that when you shoot it so that you have your, when you decock it, you're back in double action mode. It's 10 pound pull. That's always going to be 
a 5.4 pound pull or a 5.5, somewhere in that range, right around a five pound pull, but basically. So I like the Glock trigger. I don't have a problem with this trigger either, but I do like the Glock trigger because it's consistent. It's always the same. I like the fact that you get more rounds here, but then I also like the, the ergonomics of this gun uh, a little bit better than that. I do like the Glock, the ergonomics. I think this one has better ergonomics. That one is good. They both have a light and accessory rail, so you can attach lights and lasers. This one is more of your old school, traditional Picatinny 1913 style. And then this one is a proprietary Glock accessory rail, which still fits everything that you need, lights, lasers, and so forth. But you can see it's different. You can see the two, the two guns compared, if you look down on them side by side, if they're close to each other, the profiles are different. The Glock is just chunkier, thicker, but also lighter. Uh, durability, they both get an A-plus in that category. I've had this gun since 2013, um, and I've had this gun since 2010. Shoot them both in the range. I've carried them both on my hip. Uh, in and out of holsters, you see the wear, the wear marks on, on them. It's not that bad. The finish is still good on both of them. It's held up. The finish is very good. Also external extractor on this side. Good finish on this gun. One thing I do like about this gun, it has some coating, some uh, like nitron coating internal parts to help resist corrosion when you're in salty environments, salt air, close to the ocean, in the ocean. In the, if you're coming out of the water, force recon or seals, if you're coming out of the ocean, this gun resists it. Now, this also is very uh, corrosion resistant because of all the polymer. And this tenifer finish is really good. But whenever you're dealing with a corrosive agent like salt water, which is very corrosive, you still would want to do some maintenance on this. I would, I would wash these guns of all that salt water with some warm water, warm, fresh water, then let it dry and then do some routine maintenance and then properly lubricate these things and dry them because that salt water is corrosive. Even if you have a great platform like these two platforms that Navy SEALs and Force Recon Marines will use, they still do the proper maintenance to maintain their guns. Everybody gets into this, oh, this gun will shoot underwater. This gun will shoot in the mud. Clean your guns. In the military, they teach you to maintain the tool that's going to save your life potentially. If, you're geared, if you take care of your gear, your gear will take care of you. And on that note, this is Staff Sergeant Brian Calhoun, 0811-8531, Marksmanship Coach, late.